here. I'm on location tonight at my parents' house in Wisconsin, and we are working on this splendid sampler to quilt along. And uh, we've worked on uh, some of our blocks we've we've assembled. Uh, this is the the section that we put on. We sewed that on last night, and tonight we're making a new block, so we have it cut out already. And we are gonna sew. I'm gonna use my mom's sewing machine, so you'll get a get to take a look at that. And that is the plan. So thanks for joining me here. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginning crafters. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. So again, I'm on location here, uh, kind of looking at the ceiling here a little bit, but I'm gonna flip you around and we'll be looking at my mom's sewing machine. Uh, so she has a Bernina sewing machine. I think it's probably gotta be about 15 years old or so now, but still way, way younger than my, my vintage machine. So it's kind of fun, fun to use hers every once in a while. So we are working on the Creative Harmony block and we got it cut out last night. And uh, so we're gonna work on it now. So let's get going. Thanks again for joining me. Okay, here we are. So I am just going down the list here of all the blocks that need to get done. And uh, what we're doing tonight is the Creative Har Harmony block by Gudrun Elra and, uh, um, or Erla and, uh, uh, we got it all cut out last night. I'm pretty happy with that. I was not expecting um, to get that far, actually. And we kind of have it all laid out here. Uh, we will not be working like this with it all laid out. But it's fun to fun to see what it might look like. So that that's what we did. So tonight, I mean, I'm thinking we can pretty much sew this thing together. I don't know that for a fact, but I think I think we'll get pretty far. Um, oh, uh, Sylvia says, hello everyone, those aprons look great. Yes, so our email for that has been a little bit goofy today, but we do have aprons now in the shop. Uh, so be sure to check that out. Um, I'm really excited about them. Uh, my mom actually modeled them when, when we got here uh, a couple days ago. Actually, just yesterday we got here. Uh, so you'll have to check that out too. <laughs> It was nice. So uh, they are beautiful. They feel so nice. I just really, really love them. I'm pretty excited about them. So check those out. Um, I think I'll be stitching on one of them a little bit later in the month. I'm hoping to do that. So, all right, let's get going on this. Uh, it looks like we're just starting by sewing a white piece to both of these. So let's just start there. Oh, let's let's do a little leader here. I think she's got some other leaders hiding here. Oh yeah. So here's my mom's leader and ender stack. She's doing that just like how I am uh, with some recycled clothing here. Oh, and uh, I this is that that uh, uh, stiletto that I'm that I made the other day, and I'm like, yeah, I'll give that to my mom. So <laughs> it's uh, mom's stiletto now. Oh gosh, I'm trying to find, uh, using a new machine, trying to find where the presser foot is. It's always kind of funny using a new machine or a machine you don't use very often. So, all right, um, good, we got that going. Let's get our first two little bits done here. I'm kind of guessing at the quarter inch seam allowance. I think it's right on the edge of this uh, presser foot. All right, that one and this guy. I always like um, having the stilettos here to kind of guide the work in. So my mom's machine has a needle down function. And that means whenever I stop sewing, my needle is always gonna be down into the fabric. And that is a nice, like for quilting, that's really nice and um, it's good for just anything, really. I, I do like that needle down position. All right, so I'm gonna just, um, I'm gonna continue her leader and ender quilt here, I think. Look at this cute fabric. So 
So she is actually, um, she just finished her back for the Aurifil quilt and um, is going to start quilting that. And she finished the back for her granny square quilt and she's actually going to send that out to get quilted. I, I don't think she's had a quilt quilted by someone else before with a, their long arm machine. So that'll be kind of fun. I'm excited to see how that goes. All right, let's press these. Um, it looks like we press towards the, the white piece. So I have my mom's uh, pressing mat here. I'm just gonna stick it right up here. I don't really like pressing on the, the extension table here, but we're doing just so little of it that it'll be fine. But yeah, I encourage all of you to check out those aprons. Um, I think the email, I, we meant to send an email this morning, but it wasn't working. So uh, check your emails now and there'll probably be a link. Uh, we also introduced uh, some just iron on, uh, basically like iron on patterns that are just the iron ons. So you can uh, iron, on to, iron, iron them onto whatever you like. And uh, there are these cute little herbs. Um, so I'm going to stitch one of those up, I think, uh, later in the week. All right. Oh, we're stuck here. <laughs> stuck to the bottom of this. All right. Next up. All right. We are going to sew these slightly longer pieces to here. We got this guy and we got this guy. That's looking good. I hope you're doing well too, Patty. We actually had blue sky here today. It's been a while since I've seen blue sky. It's been so rainy in the Midwest. So just not even rain, I mean rainy for sure, but like just, just gloomy, just uh, gray skies. So to wake up and have blue skies today was nice. Oh yes, Colleen, I am on a bit newer machine tonight for sure. It's actually, it's goofy. Like, you know, I'm definitely not familiar with this machine. I, I've stitched on this machine a lot before, but it's just not like, this. it sounds different. It's just not my um, go-to machine. So it's just kind of, um, little uh little funny to my brain right now there are nice features though like that needle down position i do like i do like that and then, then if i just click my pedal backwards then it goes up so it's just kind of nice I, I don't have that um that with my um old kenmore that that 38, uh, 1938 Kenmore machine. That just goes until it kind of stops and I gotta, I gotta practice basically stopping on there. All right, we're gonna press them to this piece. My mom's got one of these nice cordless irons too and man, I just love it, especially in little spaces like this where you don't want a cord shooting everywhere. Um, it's not that fancy, Gina. Gina's asking if it if it um, auto cuts the thread. No, it doesn't. Um, newer machines do do that now, and man, that would be slick just to sew, and it just cuts it for you. And man, yeah, nope, we are not there yet with our machines. Who knows? One day, I, maybe I'll get like a real, actual <laughs> new machine. That would be kind of fun to play around with. I mean, I've been just using vintage machines for so long now that it, it would just be, I mean, this feels super new and this is, this is definitely, you know, a good 15 years old, I would think to this machine. All right. So an A triangle, that's these guys to the left side of each unit, press and trim the triangles as, so, as shown. Okay. So it looks like we are sewing a triangle like this Oh, Lenore says I have a 1970s Kenmore and love, or a Bernina and love it. This has got to be, well, like late 2000s, maybe. No, early, um, I don't know, maybe um, 
2000 in the 2000s somewhere is this machine so it's not so it's not super old but you know we're in 2021 now so it might be like 20 year getting close to 20 years old which is crazy that's that's crazy to think um because to me this is like a fancy new machine um but yeah they are way fancier at this point all right, so I think I'm just sewing along this line here and we're actually gonna trim this bottom piece off. So I'm gonna just uh, match this guy to the top. <gasps> Amy, yes, there was Chad Kitty appearances. He came a little earlier tonight. Uh, we let him in for a little. So again, Chad is my parents, kitty cat. But it's an outdoor, like, working cat, so it's like, its home is outdoors, and it graces us with his presence if, you know, <laughs> if he feels like we deserve it that evening sort of thing. So he's been actually gone for all, like, all day long. Usually if we're outside and he hears us, he'll, like, come and walk with us and stuff, but he's been just gone except for the the evenings but we kind of suspect that there well I don't know this is what I think but there's a lot of giant birds out here lately and we think he's kind of like he's kind of a safe sort of cat so he just kind of stays underneath things and and whatever so I think he kind of just chills in like wood piles and stuff all day and then he comes out and walks around at night <laughs> freely without giant eagles and turkeys and stuff everywhere so uh, um, he did come by tonight and he, we brought him inside and we got, I gave him all the cute, nice little pets and until he was had enough of that and then, then we let him out again. <laughs> but yes, it was nice to see little Chad Kitty. He still has all his winter fluff on. And none of his, none of his fur's coming out yet, so it's definitely not... Not warm enough for him to be getting all skinny again. He's got all his fluffers. Okay, um, we press towards the um, triangle. So let's put that on top. My mom has a wool mat here and she's just covered it with, um, uh, so like a wool mat like mine and she's covered it with just this towel. Oh, I, I suspect it's because when she uses starch, like you can kind of see, um, starch just stains everything, I feel like. That's why I haven't really used a lot of it on this quilt. I used it all the time on the first blended sampler, and it, it helps for sure, but um, it totally stained my uh, um, my quilt, or my, my um, ironing board. So I just kind of stopped using it, and I think that's why mom has this... Uh, towel over it, which that's a good idea. All right, so we got these two fellers. Um, and next up, it looks like we just kind of snip off this little bit. I might just do that with a scissors. Like, do I really need to? Well, I have the, <laughs> it's just sticking to the bottom of the mat. I do have the cutting board here, so I suppose let's just, let's just go with the cutting board. I'm going to move all these pieces and I'm just gonna snip off this extra bit. Apparently we do not need that little extra bit there. So I got my big cutting thing. Oh, and mom, uh, mom heard us last night. She got out her, her cutting glove. So this is her nice cutting glove. <laughs> Since I'm, I'm all paranoid to cut, cut this stuff without, without the cutting glove. You know what, I think I'm gonna put this along one of the lines of the cutting mat here. I'm so used to working in a little itty bitty small space, so this feels normal having this right on the near the machine here. All right, don't need that feller. This is like a nice quick little block. Oh, it feels good to pepper these these easy blocks into um, into the quilt. There's a lot of blocks. Oh, there are a lot of blocks that take a long time. I mean, they end up beautiful, and I'm, I'm always excited about um, how they turn out. But man, sometimes you just want one of these quick, super easy fellers, and and this one is is fitting the bill so far, and still looking like interesting and stuff. So I 
good run did a nice job on this, I do have to say. So, okay. Here are the two pieces. Oh, oh yes, oh, I didn't talk about that yet. So Paula, um, I did not, I did not lay out the Aurifil quilt today. Today kind of got away from me. So um, tomorrow for sure, because I need to put it together before I leave um, on Sunday. So uh, tomorrow I do want to put that quilt together. All right, I think we're just adding on this guy here. So um, we'll see how it goes. If it's not too busy here, maybe I'll film it. But otherwise, I'll definitely take photos. But I will for sure lay it out so that when I get home, we can actually sew the thing together. <laughs> so I'm going to lay out row the rows for that. That'll be nice. It'll be awesome to have that done. Um, so looking forward to that. Okay, I did this right, right? Yep, that looks good. Yeah. Dude, we're gonna get this done. <laughs> we might have to start another blog. I mean, we might be done with this even faster than I thought. I mean, we really just have that center, that, um, that line that goes on the middle of it all. All right, now where did this get sewn on? Right here. Um, and then uh, a couple little squares to cap off the ends, and then we're kind of basically done with this one. Gosh, it's pretty slick. I suppose it helps that we cut it already. All right, let's get another one of these. These started. So mom has a whole box of um, these half square triangle leader and enders that she put together. Yes, exactly, Paula. Uh, nice to have the parental space to, to spread out. Yes, they have uh, much more of a floor than, than we do. I don't think I'd be able to actually lay it out at our house without moving furniture around, and that's, that's not happening. So um, I'm going to lay it out on the floor here, and then we can rearrange it a little bit and stuff. That'll be nice. Uh, and my mom got hers all sandwiched already. So um, maybe maybe I'll lay that out too. That'd be nice to see. Hers just turned out so pretty. Okay, let's press these and we're pressing towards the new triangle. All right, we got our little percentage sign. Get started here. Out of the way. Okay. So we'll flip this up. Cool. That's looking good. Next one. Yeah, definitely helpful cutting this all out yesterday. All right, that's that. Now, okay, so now we gotta do, we gotta do some centering. So center and sew the E strips between the two units as shown. Okay, so I want this to be down at the bottom and this one with the stars to be up at the top. Then we have this piece. So we kind of have to find the center. So I'm just going to fold it in half and uh, just finger press it. Just I'm just gonna press with my fingers along the edge here. Okay, and then I guess we're kind of well, we get, we'll sew it on one side at a time, but we're sewing it like basically so it kind of aligns with the point here. So I suppose about right like so. It's a little goofy, but I suppose if we lift this up, oh, we got to scooch over. We can see where that line aligns with um, the point there. So I think that's the deal. So, all right, that looks good right there. I'm going to sew that side, and then we'll flip it around and sew the other side. Kind of a goofy little thing. I think we did this once, uh, this, like, line down the middle in the first Splendid Sampler, or some other, some other time we had to do this, this sort of thing. 
I really had a fun time um, doing that free motion quilting this week, though. I'm I'm excited to get more of these blocks done so we can do more of that. And I have so many quilts just ready to go for some free motion quilting, like the triangle tangle quilt. Oh gosh, the I Love Home quilt. Those are sandwiched and ready to go. So we might need to break those out one of these um, Finish It Fridays or something. Both of those need a little bit of a plan. Oh, <laughs> Sally's missing the click clack of, of my machine. Yeah, this is, uh, this Bernina is, is nice and quiet. I know Bernina is a popular brand that um, people do really like. And I mean, I love using it here. This is, so this is the machine that we quilted the koala quilt on. So remember the koala quilt, uh, that was all done on this, this sewing machine, the, the quilting. So I think before I press this, I'm going to try and sew the other side on so I can see like the, the lines that we pressed in. So uh, I'm going to flip this. I'm just going to kind of guess to start out line our edge, then I'll flip it up and try and get that line to match with our, that point on like this point right here. I don't know, I suppose that looks pretty good, as good as it will, and there. Press this, dang, we're gonna like be done with this. Easy. Ugh, it's kind of a relief. Nice, easy black. All right, let's line up this edge a little bit more. Just kitty scratching it over a hair. Actually, this is what the stiletto is good for. Hold it in place. This doesn't, this definitely has um, a smoother sound to it, doesn't it? this uh, Bernina. I love that all these sewing machines just last forever. It's just kind of cool. Ugh, but that needle down, that's pretty nice. I, that, that is a feature that would be fun to have. All right, geez, we have, um, we just have two more pieces here. Uh, let's press this. So uh, it looks like we're pressing. Looks like we're pressing towards. So these seam allowances are towards the center. So I'm going to just stay on the back here. Get this side. I suppose I could get rid of those little, little kind of points that are sticking out here, but fine. All right, let's flip it around and get it. Oh, cute. It's so pretty. That's a nice, easy block, but it looks fancy still, I think. Okay, we're not quite done, though. So, all right, we have uh, a couple more pieces to sew on, but it's looking looking pretty nice so far. Oop, I want the stars on the top, so we'll, we'll do it like that. Does my mom have more than one machine? I don't think so. I think this is... Nope, this is her only machine. Um, she does have some sewing stuff in the basement. So we were talking, you know, we always talk like, ah, oh, you just gotta, you get, just have to magically find someone who just has that featherweight that they want to get rid of. And, and uh, that you can put in the basement. <laughs> uh, so then she can have one down there. But nope, this is her, this is her only machine. All right, there are some more instructions here. Draw a diagonal line corner to corner on the wrong side of the C squares. Which ones are those? These. Okay, wait a sec. Okay, so we got some instructions here. Okay, draw a diagonal line from corner to corner on the wrong side of the C squares, referring to the stitch and flip method. Place a C square on... Oh, ugh, okay, I'm totally reading it wrong. I'm reading it like we got to um, put like a diagonal there, but no, we got to do it here. So let me grab a little pencil. Um, let's see. All right, well, I might just be doing a pen here. All right, so I'm going to draw, get the ruler. 
draw a diagonal on the back here. I could just fold this. I think I'm just going to draw lightly. There. That's good enough, I think. I think I can see that. Do one here. So I would be doing this on the wrong side, but you know, it's white. I, I gotta redraw this. I don't think I can see it good enough. Um, it's, it's um, you know, I don't have a right or wrong side. So I'm declaring a wrong side here. Okay, good. Okay, so, uh, um, place the C squares on opposite corners of the block as shown. So true and press. Well, easy peasy. So um, we don't have like points and stuff down here, but we do have the edges to go off of. So I'm going to go off an edge right here. So the edge at the bottom and edge on the side. And I'm going to just sew right on that diagonal. And we are going to press this up that way. So all we're doing is kind of like cutting off our little percentage sign. So we'll have one here. And I'm going to just kind of place this one up here right away like so. And we'll chop all this off, but I'm going to press it first. Oh, Amy, that's a great idea. So Amy's saying sometimes I um, press them in half instead of drawing them. And then, then you can just use that fold line. I, I sometimes just finger press them. So you just get enough of that fold line um, to sew along. But eh, decided to decided to draw it this time. I don't know why. But yeah, I do like the just folding it method. All right, wow, I did not sew that very well, but that's okay. All right, let's get another leader here. When I press this, I can kind of adjust any poor sewing. That's flooring it. I wanted to see how fast it went. I wonder if um I wonder if hers has some has a stitch speed regulator because I I did like that tip, like that'd be an interesting tip to try um for free motion quilting to slow down the speed of the pedal so that when you floor it it's the speed that you want for free motion quilting then it's at a steady speed, um I like that idea like I like I want to try that I have a. I have an industrial sewing machine that I don't use very often and I'd like to use more and that does have a stitch regulator so that I would like to um and it has a huge neck it's like one of those traditional like jukey industrial straight stitch machines like that I got on eBay once and um I would uh, love that to be my free motion quilting machine. So that's that's in the back of my head that that's going to be the free motion quilting machine at some point. But I just I just have never gotten to it. Um, but I do want to at some point because ooh that would be nice. And then with the stitch regulate not not the state stitch regulator but the um, uh, oops we'll just leave that there. Uh, just uh, being able to slow down the pedal. Marie says it's great for free motion quilting. Yeah, I've never tried that and I love that tip. So I would like to do that. So we're going to cut these off. Oh, I am not on Facebook tonight. Someone just asked about Facebook. Nope, I am. I'm, since I'm on location at my parents' house uh, in my mom's sewing room, I am not on um, Facebook, just YouTube again tonight. However, Monday I will be back on both. So sorry about that. Um, just being on the one. All right, so I like, and my mom showed me this, a lot of times you just cut this off and you then you press. So this is like our extra seam allowance here. Um, so that's the, the typical way, like cut that off and then press, press this up. But I like leaving it and then uh, um, using it as a straight edge. So this is like my perfect square still. So I like pressing this and using it to line up um, the edge of what I'm pressing. So that's um, that's a mom tip for ya. But I've been doing it like that now and that's so helpful. So I'll press it first by lining up those edges and then I will trim off all that extra after. <clears throat> and that works like super duper nice. So let's do this side too. Man, we are totally done with this block. This was like a 
20 minute block, you guys. Well, we cut it. So eh, let's still call it an hour, 45 minute block. Let's call it a 45 minute block. Cause I'm yammering and stuff too. <laughs> Colleen says, yeah, mom. Yep, she's got all those good tips. All right, um, I'm gonna grab, we got this big uh, ginger scissors sitting right here. So you can use a rotary cutter, but I just always use a scissor. So flip that back, you don't wanna cut that off. And I'm gonna just trim so we got about our quarter inch seam allowance there or so, and then flip back. We've already pressed it, so it's, it's good to go there. Man, you guys, we saw eagles today, turkey vultures, um, turkeys, geese. It's like all, oh, like pelicans. It's like all these large birds. And that I'm telling you, that's why Chad kind of chills out on his own, waits for all those birds, big birds to go to sleep. And then, then he comes back out. <laughs> all right, you guys, we are done with this block. How easy was that? That was so much quicker and simpler and less thinking than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> um, I love this with the, the flowers down here and the stars up top. I, I really like what we did for the, um, the uh, images or the, um, the patterns there. So, all right, let's take a look here. I'm gonna cross that out. That is done. So let's see. Ooh, here we go. Here's a Sharpie accent highlighter. Let's cross that out. So I am, <laughs> yeah, I know, really, right? Uh, Colleen, I think um, turkey season is actually coming up. Um, all right, so again, the highlighted ones are the ones that were done, and at this point, I'm just going top to bottom. Unless you guys have a um, request, like we did some requests um, the past few times to do an English paper piecing and a foundation paper piecing one, so we jumped around for there, but... Just in general, I'm like, oh my God, let's just go down the list and get these done. So the next one on my list is Kappa um, on um, page 94. So why don't we check out what that looks like? But dang, this one, I'm really happy with this. So actually right now we have this one and one other one done. Let's see. Oh yeah. So we have these two done, and these are my only two completed blocks. So I need at least two more to get another seg section of four that I can quilt. So uh, before we can do more quilting, before we can do more assembly, we got to get, gotta get some more blocks done here. We are ticking away at this. Uh, we're going to get it done. I, I, I trust that we'll get this done. So, all right, page 94. 94. Oh, cute. Okay, so here's a little applique one uh, by Pat Sloan. All right. Well, I don't have any applique stuff here. So I might just, so in theory, you want some lightweight fusible web um, to press on that. And I have some of that at home. I think I bought some more. So maybe we'll wait on that one. What else can we do? Could we start today? Um, all right, we have um, double Dutch is next. That's uh, page nine. Yeah, the gingham. Um, Amy says I like the gingham background in that one. Yeah, that is really cute. Oh, maybe I can do a gingham mug. I think I have a little bit of that gingham left because I'll do a white background because all my backgrounds are white. But with a gingham mug, ooh, that'd be cute. So we're not going to work on that one, though, because I don't have those supplies here. Let's see what page nine has in store. Oh, dang. Okay, so this is um, the next one down on the list after the cuppa, the cuppa one. So this is Double Dutch by Karen Costello Soltis. And um, yeah, you know what? I think we can do this. This actually looks like... I got to see. Um, we got... Um, <laughs> all my orophil blocks here. Remember we made all these orophil blocks. I swear we must have done both of these blocks in here. I mean, we have basically a nine patch. Did we do a simple nine patch? I'd be surprised if we don't have a nine patch in here. Oh, you know what? I bet you we didn't do a nine patch because the measurements for this were better for like a four patch or a two, like instead of a nine patch. So I guess we didn't do that one. 
Because that would have been a, I mean, these seem like some of those basic blocks that we should have in here, but I guess we didn't do that. Oh, crazy for funny. So, all right, um, uh, let's uh, get going on this. All right, so uh, 10 blueprint squares. Oh, crazy. Okay, so in my head, to get some of these shapes, because we got two... We got two like nine patches here. Normally I would think you'd sew some strips together and cross cut, cut them to get these. But in this, in these instructions, we're actually cutting out every single little square. So I suppose that's, that's fine. We can just do that, I suppose. So yeah, I don't know. I guess let's cut some squares for the next uh, 25 minutes or so. I'm going to just do it how the instructions say. I'm not going to I'm not going to mess with um cutting strips and cross cutting or whatever. We'll just we'll just do what the instructions say. So all right, let's um choose some fabric here. So all of um this light colored fabric I'm going to have be the white again. So I'm going to just leave that out. Um my backgrounds and all of them have been um white. Jenny says no, do it the fast way. Yeah, so the fast way is if I delete if I delete this the, these center ones, right? So then I just have um a blue, a white and a blue. I could just sew a long strip of blue and a long strip of white and a long strip of blue and then cross cut them to get these pieces. And then for this, if I do a long strip of white and then a long strip of blue, really not that long, then I cross cut it. Um, then, uh, then, um, you know, gosh, that really is maybe easier, but I would have to make up this whole thing. Um, press all seam allowance. Yeah. To make nine, arrange five. Eight, oh gosh. Yeah. This is just all the little pieces, isn't it? Ugh. Do I want to do it that way? You know what? Maybe I will... Maybe I'll just cut some long strips and we'll start there. I'm going to cut a long strip of blue, a, lo a couple long strips of white, some long strips of red. Do what's the what's the Amy way? I miss that Amy. Um is that the strips? Is that what I'm talking about? Do it the easy way. The little pieces. Oh, Amy says the little pieces teach precision. Uh, Jenny's just like, go to the next block. It's like, mm, enough of this one. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to just get this done. Let's just do it. Let's cut some strips. Maybe I will do it the easy way. We'll see how easy this is. So, all right. I need basically my white, which will be the background. And then I need two colors here. I would like them to kind of feel different, how this blue feels different than the, than the red. And you know what's jumping out at me immediately are these two that are sitting here. I mean, these feel totally different. Um, I do think um, this one's kind of fun. We haven't used this in a long time. This is kind of feeling like the red one to me. Um, gosh, and we have this tan. What else could we do? Oh, this mauve is kind of pretty. There, should we do this? Should we have um, maybe, or maybe this mauve is the one with all the half square triangles and then we can see all these flowers in the blue. Should we do that? Let's just do these. This is kind of fun. This will be like our mauve block. Okay, the end. Quick decisions. Get her done. The end. All right, so one and a, this is a whole pile of one and a half inches here. So I'm going to just cut me some strips here. Let's do that. I'm going to do it right here by the sewing machine. Um, we may have to press a little bit yet, but we'll we'll see. Ugh, gosh, yeah. Let's let's do a quick press. We're gonna need some precision here, so um, I am gonna press. But it looks like, yeah. I, I wonder how much we really need. Let's let's see. So, um, how many? This will be the red square. So we're gonna need five, ten. So 10 red squares at one and a half inches each. So that's 10 plus another five. So I need 15 inches worth of um, strips. So I'm gonna cut, cut a few out of here. Maybe I'll just cut three. 
just so I have them. All right, and then let's just press this right away. I'm gonna have to figure out the math all over again. So this is gonna be the, well, again, I'm gonna need like 15 inches worth. <laughs> Jenny, that's funny. I, I, Mom mentioned, oh, I'm gonna go upstairs and it's almost time to watch you. <laughs> and I'm like, you could come in here and just watch me right here. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, she, that is definitely, we do like tag teaming on, on, um, ironing and sewing though, and, or putting together stuff and sewing. All right. And then for the white, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 16, um, 18, 20. Tw okay. We need like 24 squares. So 24 and another 12 inches. Ugh, we're gonna need like 36 inches worth. So I'm gonna just cut a pile of strips. We'll figure this out as we go. Let's just do it that way. We're gonna just, I'm not even gonna read the instructions, I don't think. We're gonna just make this block up. <laughs> that sounds a little crazy, but I think, I think I understand it enough to just do that. It is time to cut some strips, and you know what? I think I'm gonna do it all at the same time. Okay, let's, I'm just uh, putting my white piece along like an edge here, and uh, let's just throw these other ones down too. Look at all these fuzzles. I'm gonna just cut three strips of each of these. Actually, let's um, count how many inches this is. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ugh, maybe just a little shy of that. So let's call it eight, 16 inches. Um, 24. Yeah, I'm going to just cut three. I'm going to have extra, but who cares? Okay. Um, let's get one good cut. Then I think I'm going to have to rotate this around to get my other cut. So again, I'm not really uh, thinking about this too much about, I'm just kind of generalizing how much I might need for this. I don't actually know. <laughs> we are just, I just know I need a pile of one and a half inch bits. Oh gosh, I'm too far over. Um, and it does not feel like I'm cutting through anything. Ugh, yeah, all right. Time for a new blade down here. Wow, I only have three pieces here and it still feels like I'm not cutting through anything. Okay, there, we, we, we got it. All right. I'm gonna rotate that and I'm gonna just start. Oh, shoot. That's what I was hoping not to do. Get it all caught everywhere. Um, but I think we're still fine. And I actually, it doesn't matter that I'm kind of angled on this. So, all right, let's do. Let's just double check. Yeah, one and a half inch squares. So I'm gonna cut a pile of one and a half inch strips here. I'm just gonna do three and then I'm hoping we'll be on our way. Oh gosh, I totally moved the ruler. Oof, those may be super crooked, but hopefully they're okay. Gosh, it is cutting, but the sound of the blade makes it seem like I'm not cutting anything. After this, I'll actually measure <laughs> to make sure um, I'm doing the, the amounts of strips that I need. Okay, so this is my mom's cutting glove. The one thing I don't like about it is I wish it had like the little rubber grippers on, but it is still, just still feels nice to have the glove. Oh, the slatted ruler. Dang, that would have worked perfect for this. You're right. Slatted ruler would have worked amazing, but 
this is fine too. That's right. You know what? I think I have the slotted ruler at my house. I think I stole it. Um, and it's still at my house. Oh, well. <laughs> I have to bring that back. But the uh, slotted ruler... Actually, I think um, Goodrun is the one who makes those. So the person who we just... Uh, the block that we did prior to this, I think she's... They're the manufacturer of those nice slotted rulers. So dang, I could use that. Okay, let's get going here. All right, so I'm gonna start off with the, um, I'm gonna start off with the blue squares. So let's see, I'm gonna do the ones where I do, uh, um, I'm going to just sew the pieces like this and then we'll cross cut, but I do want to get the actual size that I need. So I'm going to have to do some math now. So I need one, two, three, four of these. So four, one and a half inches, that's four inches plus another two inches. So I need six inches worth of strip. That makes sense, right? I think that I think that math works. So, all right, I'm going to just trim these to six inches. I might go a hair over so I can have some extra. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, yeah, and I'll go a hair extra. Just in case I mess up. And we'll have enough, we'll have enough um, of this fabric, so I'm not worried about that. It's actually going to work out just right, I think. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I, I am just going to give myself another half inch, just in case, just so when I cross cut it, it'll be fine. All right. <laughs> Let's let's make this even more confusing by um, sewing a bunch of things at the same time. We're going to speed through this. So, all right, I need to sew these three strips together like this, and then I'll cross cut it to get the right pieces. Um, so while we're at it, I need a middle piece that is um, this plus some more white and white on top. We, are, we might have to cut more white out. Okay, so for these middle pieces, I just have two. And uh, um, so that would be two inches plus another one inch. So that's three inches. So I only need three inches worth of this. So let's do this at the same time. And I just have to keep, keep my bearings. Gosh, I really... <laughs> I know we don't have a lot of time left, but I kind of really want to get this going as quickly as I can. At least, uh, what I don't want is to be way confused when I do the work, on the work on this again. But we'll figure it out. We're doing it the super speedy way. Maybe we'll just do the first blocks and then I'll do the other ones later. Because those ones, uh, okay, I'm going to give myself another half inch. Those ones have like half square triangles and stuff in. So let's just get this first... Ooh, that didn't, that didn't feel right. Yeah, that hardly cut. Um, let's just get this first batch of pieces out. And I think we'll, these are basically our first two nine patches. So let's, um, let's scooch all this out of the way. Okay, and so I need these pieces sewn like this, and then I need these pieces sewn like so. So we just need two of these, but I need like four of these. So this might not quite make sense yet if you have never done uh, um, some nine patches, but I think this is gonna turn out. So I'm gonna just try and sew all this. Gina says, I'm confused. All right, it will, it will come to light in a sec. It's gonna make sense, I, I promise. Um, so let's, let's just get these sewn together and then we'll press and then it'll start to make sense. Amy says, Gina, it will. This is definitely the speed.
speedy way of, of doing this. All right, so I'm going to, and I know I'm doing two parts of it at once, like I'm doing these short pieces and these long pieces. That's just so I can keep stuff on the machine. It will totally make sense though, I'm, I promise. So I gotta take this stuff off the machine now. Okay, so this long one. I know I did that math pretty quick in my head and if you don't know what we're doing yet, that probably sounded like a bunch of gibberish, but it'll, it'll make sense. All right, let's line this all up. So this is kind of what I've been saying with this quilt that it's not like a, like a, it's a sampler. So it's not like a normal quilt where we would do like, 20 of the same block or something, you know? And we don't do many of those those um, here, but like the granny square quilt, for example, where it's the same block over and over again. Um, there are ways when you do certain blocks to like maximize your time and, and energy um, making them. And uh, we're kind of doing a little about a little of that on this particular block. So instead of cutting out a pile of tiny pieces, we're going to cut these strips and it's going to work out a little bit better for us. So, all right, I got, I got these done. So what I have is, you know, color, white color. And this one I have white color, white. So what I'm going to do now, so now this is probably going to feel very similar to the granny square quilt. I'm going to cross cut them. So I'm going to cut across and I'm going to end up with like a little, a little, it's gonna look like I sewed squares together, right? But I actually, it actually came from strips. So if I sew, if I cut this off, you know, it looks like just three squares now. If I cut this off, then this will look like three squares. And if I put those two together, then you're starting to get our crisscross stuff happening. So all I need to do is press this. Um, I'm just looking at the um, directions here. Okay, so we're gonna always press towards the, the color part, it looks like. So let's get the pressing mat. Oh, the little, the little fabric came off of it, so we just got the nice wool pressing mat. So towards the color, so the seam allowances are gonna go outward here. I'm just gonna go right along the line, right on the inside there. We'll get a little bit better on the outside. I don't think I did the best job at pressing this, but get the picture there. We got our nice uh, flat piece there. And then this one, I'm gonna press the opposite direction, but still towards, towards the color parts. Okay. So there are our opposite pieces. I am gonna give those a cut all at once. So I'm gonna kind of lean it over the edge a little bit so we get a nice straight cut for our first cut. I'm gonna just put this guy right on top. Maybe not the best idea because I think this blade is pretty, uh, pretty dull, but um, we're gonna do it anyway. Oh gosh, yes. Marie says this way is so much easier than sewing all those little pieces. Agreed. So thanks for convincing me to do it this way because um, I wasn't going to follow the instructions. You know, I did do, there was a block that we did in the first blended sampler that was a whole pile of little pieces like that. And I, I did it that way. And it was a really good way to see how good your scant quarter inch is and all that. Um, but this way is nice for this. So I'm gonna cross cut these. I know I'm a little off screen here, but I'm gonna cut them at the one and a half inch marks um, till I'm cut all, all the way up. And you know, obviously I have less of these ones 
um, here the, with the whites on the outside, but that's because those are the middle pieces of both of these, so, so I don't need as many of those. And we're gonna have this little extra, that's because I gave myself a, a hair extra. Right, so I don't I don't need this piece actually. Oh geez. Alright, let's see where I'm just gonna go over this again. Right there. Ugh. Good enough. Alright. And I need two more pieces out of here. Still at that one and a half inch mark. Uh oh. Ah, I think I cut this the wrong size, you guys. I did. Ah, boo, I cut that at one and a quarter. Oh my god, you guys. So now I think I have to do that over again. Ah. All right. Boo! <laughs> Well, I think we can get at least one of these. Got overly excited there, so I'm gonna have to actually cut two more of these, but um, we can see, we can still kind of get the picture here. So uh, now we have these strips, right? We have some that are uh, this color, white color, and then we have the ones that are like white color, color um, white. So now if we kind of arrange those, there we go, we have our nine patch here. Um, <laughs> and then I have one extra because I cut these at the wrong size. Boo! Oh gosh, I'm I'm in my head trying to like, be like, oh, could I just cut, could I just sew like an eighth of an inch and have it work? But I don't think so. So let's, let's just fix that quick. Ugh, that's annoying. Okay, fine, so. Oh, that's so annoying. All right, let's just do those again. So I need, we got some extra here. These ones I might actually have to cut, have to do as squares. Boo. All right, I am just gonna do these as squares now. So this is what we were originally gonna have to do for this whole thing. All right, I need two of these. I actually need three of these. I only have enough for two right here. <sighs> Dang, that's a big, stupid blow. Okay. I have two. I need one more. We do have enough fabric for one more. Got all excited and then I trimmed them wrong. Okay, snowball the corners. Oh, that is a fabulous idea. Okay, never ever would have thought of that. Um, so is that is that what you guys were saying is Amy's idea? Okay, totally, totally understand that. So let me know that um, next time. So, but let me tell you what we're talking about here. So Amy, I think it was Amy, is saying snowball um, the corner. So let me just, uh, I actually have this right here. So <laughs> this is my Orofil quilt that I'm going to be, um, laying out tomorrow. This is a snowball block. So it is just a square and we put these little ends, these corners on, right? All we did was put a square on here. So exactly how we did the ends for, um, for, for this guy today, we just kind of had a square, put it on the diagonal and sewed on the diagonal. So that's what, that's what these are. So what Amy is saying is sew together a nine patch. So we would sew together these rows like this, right? And what we're trying to make is, is um, one of these guys right here. I mean, right now with this, I'm making one of these, but uh, what Amy's saying is, okay, do the same thing for these but then put little squares on the end, like pretend this whole thing is a one filled in square and then just put the little corners on like how we did with, with this. So if we just, um, oh, I don't have any spare white pieces yet because I, oh yeah, 
Did I cut these yet? Oh no, I, I haven't cut my white pieces yet. But here, let's just let's just do the white pieces that, that I need and I can show you the rest of this. So one, two, I need three white pieces. I don't think I'm gonna get them from, from this. I think this will just get me two. One, because I messed up that cutting. Ugh, that just gets me. My annoying fear with cutting is that I just cut the wrong amount. I need one more. Oh, and it looks like we have a nice cut edge here. I actually need a pile more, but I'm going to do that by sewing... Um, by sewing the groups like we did. I could actually cut more for, for that. Um, Jenny's asking if I'm going to be on air tomorrow. I'm trying to figure that out yet um, for putting the Aurafil quilt together. It just depends on like what's happening in the house here and stuff. But potentially I will be going on the air just to lay out my quilt. Or I might go, I might lay it out and then go on for a little just to kind of show it and if we need to rearrange anything. So, all right, pretend I did the nine patch, like I sewed this together, and then I sewed the, these diagonals on, on just like these extra squares, and look, just like how we would do a snowball block, and then we'll get like all of that, um, that around. So that's awesome, so I love that idea. Um, remind me of that when we work on this again. <laughs> So we would be able to get that that uh, that effect by using that snowball technique um, to do it faster versus having to sew half square triangles and then try and sew all our pieces together. Ooh, I love that. Okay, so um, <laughs> you know what? I think I'm going to sew this one nine patch together right now just so I know where the what the heck was going on here. Um, when we, you know, next month when we work on this, I'm going to nest these seams together. So I'm going to just sew for a little longer here just to get, get these pieces together. But I love that snowball idea. I'm not sure I would have gotten that either until I laid it all out and then, then it made, then it made sense all of a sudden. I feel like I gotta, I gotta see it, see it working. Ooh, I'm not sure I sandwiched those or lined those up very well. All right, and just to leave that on the machine, let's start sewing some of these stupid rows together that I messed up. All right, so here's this. There we go. Oh, I did. I didn't line those up very well at all. At this point, I'm like, meh. Sandwich those. There's actually kind of like a little bump where this meets, and that's kind of like right at that spot where I want to hold my stiletto, hold these together. <laughs> Marie says, Amy's the queen of the quilting ideas today. Yeah, that's a nice little trick for sure. Dang, you know, next time we're gonna just whip through these blocks because of that, I think. All right, I'm gonna sew the rest of these. Let's just do it. Get her done. Okay, it's so annoying. It's so annoying that I messed that up. I'm gonna have to press all these now too. Amy's like, I just love saving time. Well, it might not be, Jenny, it might not be like a perfect, like, like exact snowball. Cause I think, yeah, I think a snowball, you just have like these little bitty corners, but it's the same concept. So we would be dividing it right on the diagonal. Um, so that should work out just fine. Like if I divide this right on the diagonal, it should uh, um, fold to just the right 
position. Um, it'll go a little bit over here, but that's going to be in the seam allowance, so we'll we'll lose that. Um, all right, what do we got going on here? All right, so that's our uh, there's our little nine patch, our first little nine patch. And what do we got here? Okay, that's our middle piece. You know what? I'm gonna just finger press this. <laughs> just so I can keep sewing. I'm just gonna press this this way, press this this way. And we'll just nest those seams together. Gosh, I'm... Cutting all the corners, <laughs> aren't I? Who needs some, who needs pressing? All right, let's attempt to match up this other seam now without pressing. These little bitty pieces. Oh my God, I can't even get my fingers there. Okay. Trying to match up those seams. All right. So I'm pretty crooked too. All right, and then I need to finish this piece, and then this has got to get sewn onto the piece that's on the machine right now. We're gonna end up with some little nine patches here. I'm, I'm set on it. Okay. Now let's get these together, and I am not pressing again. But hey, th that actually lined up really, really well. Uh, those are totally perfectly in line. All right, let's uh, just finger press this again. We'll press it for real when we're done, and normally you'd press this as you go, but I don't want to. Yeah, thanks for everyone who checked out those aprons today. Um, they are so lovely. Um, and I hope you guys like them. I think they're going to be just so fun to stitch on as well. I'm going to do that a little bit this coming week. But I'm excited just to keep adding some new fun things like that. All right, I'm just getting another leader up here. Oops. <laughs> that one I didn't do very well. Oh well. Mom's gonna have to work on these little leaders that I'm doing. They're not very good. Um, okay, so let's just do a final little press on these and call it a night. Okay, do I press them? I press them outward this way. These are so cute. I love a little nine patch. Okay, press those outward. Let's do that here too. There we are. So two little nine patches. So those will go at the um, those two corners. And we basically just have to do that again one more time uh, for these. And then we'll get those like little snowball extras on uh, to get the little half square triangles going. And then we just sew them together and that's that's that. So I can't believe we got this far on a whole second block tonight. That's crazy. Uh, there's no way we would have been that far if we had cut out all those little pieces. Um, 
together. So, or at all individually. So there we go. We got that guy done. We got this guy done. That was a good night of sewing here. So, all right, you guys. Okay, so thank you again for joining me here tonight on location. So I will let you guys know on the Facebook if I do end up going live tomorrow to lay out the Aurafil block of the month. I don't know when that will be yet. I do want to try and get it in um, sometime tomorrow though. Um, at worst, I'll take a photo of it and post it in the group, uh, but it would be nice to do it uh, live a little bit. So we'll see. Uh, but I'll let you know, uh, I will have that laid out and numbered like the rows numbered by the time I come home. So Monday I will be here uh, as normal on both Facebook and uh, YouTube here. So uh, thanks again for joining me here and have a fabulous evening. Good night.